hello everybody. Uh, my name is Kai. I will be talking to you about teamwork. This is a short introduction to the subject and uh, it's specifically designed for engineering and computer science students. I'm a professor of engineering and computer science and uh, who has quite a bit of experience, expertise, whatever you call it, around the idea of teamwork. And uh, so there's actually two of us that's behind this presentation, this deck. Uh, Evan Hu, who is a longtime collaborator of mine. Uh, Evan is a serial entrepreneur and executive coach. Uh, he has decades of experience leading organizations ranging from uh, Fortune 500 to startups. He has um, led, coached, took part in hundreds of successful teams. And for me, um, I'm Kai, and uh, I'm an engineer, an educator, a comic artist. You'll be seeing some of my comics here. And really an overall polymath, a person that has a lot of interests and skills. Uh, I'm a professor of engineering and computer science, and I've taught innovation, leadership, system thinking, and human thriving to thousands of students, and really involving hundreds of student teams. So, well, that kind of gives you an idea why we want to talk about teamwork. Right? This slide is called Our Flex, really what makes us experts in this. Why, why do we talk about this? Right? Together we have built, led, coached, taught, and been a part of hundreds of teams, both in the industry and in industry and in academia. Most of these were successful, many of them. Uh, some not so much, and a few of them well, horrible experiences. Right? This document, this deck, whether you're seeing the video or you're looking at the slide deck, Right, uh, it's really a synthesis of our experience and learnings that's tailored for uh, engineering and computer science students. Right, so we're going to talk about what is teamwork. Uh, why should I care about teamwork, particularly as a student? We're going to talk about Google's Aristotle project, which is uh, perhaps the most, at least in our opinion, the most well-researched uh, research project in on this topic especially as it relates to engineers and computer scientists. Uh, teamwork in university setting, we're gonna explicitly talking about how it shows up in your environment. We're gonna talk about some scenarios and we're gonna give some recommendations. All right, so let's go. What is teamwork? Well, teamwork is really about working collaboratively with a group of people to achieve a common goal. It's pretty simple, the highlighted words, collaborative, a group of people and common goal. And effective teams really draws on team members, uh, their different knowledge, skills, and abilities, and, uh, and different perspectives. An effective team, for it to be effective, it's really greater than the sum of its parts, right? One of the most common mistakes or misconceptions, if we may, uh, students may have is the difference between teamwork and group work. So group work is when group members break down a project into chunks and the chunks are not dependent on each other. There's very low interdependency between the chunks of the work. So if you do one piece of work, another piece of work, and you change one, the other one doesn't get affected. Teamwork, on the other hand, are highly interdependent, right? So for you to do teamwork, you have to plan work, uh, solve projects, problems, make decisions, review progress in service of a specific project, and, uh, and, uh, and, and you have to do it in relation with each other, right? You need each other as team members to get work done. So let's look at an example, right? Because this is really one of the biggest misconceptions that we find uh, many students make, right? So a simple project is something like moving 15 boxes, right? You don't really need, so you move it from left to right, place A to place B, you don't really need much coordination and planning, right? All right, what about a more complex problem, even just a slightly more complex project, right? You want to move 15 boxes and you want to build a tower with these 15 boxes. Well, now you suddenly have to have a plan of what this tower looks like, right? You see this little person over there with, with, with a little plan? If you don't have a plan, you can't actually build this, especially imagine these are very heavy boxes. Nobody would want to do it if you don't know what you're putting together, right? So that's a slightly more complex project. Okay, let's look at a more realistic project that us engineers or computer scientists would actually have to do, right? 
We want to design a marketable engineering product, for example, say a car. Well, suddenly you have a couple coders, you have a uh, engineer or a mechanic, you have someone who's looking at uh, economic of it, you have someone uh, who's looking at maybe regulatory limitations, and it's just, and you can think of many other people with many different expertise needs to work with each other, needs to talk to each other for this to actually work. This is highly interdependent work, right? It's shown by all the, the connections between all of these little, uh, little people here. And uh, you need a lot of planning, a lot of coordination, well, a lot of teamwork, right? So, so teamwork and group work is really on a spectrum. Right, so we on the group work spectrum, we have moving 15 boxes, randomly pile them up, no coordination, you just, just do it, right? We need a little bit of coordination, we're gonna rack all these boxes into a tower, and all the way to something much more complex like designing an engineering product, like a car. Most university projects are in this range. They're actually teamwork. Most projects, are not easily split into chunks that are independent uh, independent of each other, right? So this is one of the most uh, common mistakes students are making, right? They mistake group work for teamwork and teamwork for group work, right? So students, for example, will receive a project and uh, they'll divide up the work. They complete their work separately without communicating with each other, and uh, and they meet a day before the due date and realize the parts don't fit. Right? Well, the result is you get a bad grade. We want to avoid this for very obvious reasons. So we talk about teamwork. I already mentioned grades. I already mentioned that you're going to be working in teams uh, in the university setting. But I want to give a bigger picture view. Right? Why should I care about teamwork? Well, the big picture, picture reason is first, nobody can do it alone. Right? We, in our culture, we often hear this idea of the myth of the exceptional individual, the one person that does everything and do everything, whether this is Steve Jobs or Elon Musk. It's the, uh, it's the one person that knows all, but behind them, it's a huge team. Right? The, in very rare, especially in the realm of engineering and computer science, can an individual actually achieve true success. We all require to work with people. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Today's work is truly multidisciplinary and, and you need the teams to get things done. The second part is that we're all different and we're all good at different things. Part of it come from our training, our skills, our knowledge, our expertise. Part of it come from our perspective and experiences. Right? We have a lot of uh, research that's showing that having diversity on teams actually improve team performance. Well, one of the reason is that we see things differently, right? And uh, part of this uh, different things is also that when we look at personality traits, we're different people, right? We have different preferences. We have some of our, us are extroverted, some of us are introverted. Some of us are more conscientious and other people are not so conscientious. Some of us are more open to experience and other us are more conservative. And the thing is we actually need all of the, all of the people that are different in order, well, we're, we're really pulling from different people's perspective to do the best for the job, right? And, uh, and, and the third one, big picture wise, is human beings intrinsically thrive in teams. We have this need to, I just, we all know this, right? We want to be a part of something slightly bigger than who we are. And, uh, and we, like, we like people, right? And, and especially when it's a good teamwork experience, uh, it makes us more productive. It makes us, honestly, just a little happier, right? Now, those are very big picture questions or reasons, right? And uh, for some of you, you are thinking, okay, that's all good, but why should I really care? I, I'm a first year or third year student. Uh, I'm just trying to complete my, my, my university degree and maybe get a job, okay. So let's see some concrete reasons, right? First of all, having great teamwork skills help you get better grades. You are gonna work in teams a lot, especially if you're a student at LaSalle School of Engineering where I'm teaching. 
And uh, better teamwork give you brings you better projects, better grades, right? Obvious concrete reason number one. Second reason is, and this is, I cannot stress this enough. People with good teamwork skills get noticed and get promoted, right? Teamwork skill is a great asset for univers uh, for, for companies, right? not just <laughs> outside the university setting, for companies. And good companies knows to promote people with good teamwork skills, right? This is something that will get you benefit in your career. Um, and the good news is teamwork can be learned. Everyone can learn to do better at teamwork. It involves thinking, doing, and reflecting. Right, thinking is really more about learning the concept from this deck, and the concepts are not too difficult. It's, they're actually quite straightforward, uh, and uh, and for students that are at La Salle, that's uh, that's that's watching this video, you've also uh, been open, been exposed to this during your uh, mentorship program during your first year associated with uh, ENG eleven oh one, right? Now, doing it's really about putting the concept into practice in your many projects. And then uh, then reflecting on how did I do? How do I do better? Right? This is uh, not so different from many things that you'll be learning. It involves some thinking, learning the concept, it involves some practice, doing, and uh, and then reflecting on it. Um, so now talk about, now we wanna get into the conceptual part, right? This is, uh, I wanna talk to you about the Google Aristotle project which is something Google did. They study 180 teams, and what they really found is actually astonishing, and uh, in the sense of it really challenged a lot of conventional wisdom about teamwork. Um, what they found was teamwork, what makes teamwork is effective is less about who is on the team and more about how the team work together. This is really the largest, most rigorous study on effective teamwork and it's Google, they got lots of data, and they knew how important teamwork is. Their business empire is really dependent on it, right? So Google used to hire students with the highest GPAs from the most famous universities like Harvard, MIT, and just put them in teams, right? And, uh, and they were rather surprised to find that most of these teams didn't work, that they significantly underperformed. So in 2012, Google embarked on this most comprehensive and really data-driven research. And that's the thing that makes this particular piece of research so different than a lot of research on teamwork uh, to date is that uh, they're anal they analyze data across so many different teams of different sizes and in different locations around the globe within their organization. And, uh, and they've really shattered conventional wisdom here, right? Google research, um, in their own words, what they expected was when they went into this, they, we were pretty confident that we find a perfect mix of individual traits and skills necessary for a stellar team. So we take on one Rhodes Scholar, uh, two extroverts, and there was an idea that extroverts are really important back then, right? And uh, somehow the belief is if you're extroverted, uh, that's better than you're introverted in teams. Spoiler alert, we find that's not the case. Anyway, so, so one engineer who rock at AngularJS, which is a, uh, a computing language that's no longer really in use, and a PhD, and voila, uh, dream team assembled, right? And, uh, and what they found was that they were dead wrong. Um, the findings were surprising because it challenged these conventional wisdom at the time. So you can read their study here if you get access to the actual uh, slide deck here, and uh, or you can just search Google Aristotle Project and you find it, right? But, uh, but you don't have to because we're gonna summarize the finding for you in the next few uh, slides. So what they found was that there are five attributes of effective teams. In order of, of importance, it's psychological safety, which means can we take risk and be be ours. Can we take risks and be ourselves on this team without feeling insecure or embarrassed? Then there's dependability, which is about can we count on each other to do high quality work on time? Then there is structure and clarity, which is our goals, roles, and execution plans on our team clear. And uh, number four, it's 
meaning of work. Are we working on something that is personally important to each of us? And finally, impact of work. Do we fundamentally believe that we're making a difference? What we do matters, right? And, and, and remember, there is a order of importance going from one to two to three to four to five. And uh, so the most important they found is number one, psychological safety. So I want to speak on this a little bit. So think about it this way, right? Teams are effective when team members can, one, take risks, and two, be themselves. So why is that important? Well, think about this. So there's two types of risks you can take in a team. Either a creative one is you're proposing an unconventional idea or unconventional solution. Well, if you're not able to do this, then we'll always do the same thing and there will be no innovation, right? And we're engineers or computer scientists, we have to be able to be innovative and, uh, and so that calls for unconventional risks creative risks. Then there's the interpersonal risk. Really, often it's about giving feedbacks. Often it's about bringing up uncomfortable topic like, hey, what we're doing is not working. What should we do, folks? And uh, if we're not able to bring that to the fore, if we're not able to actually take this interpersonal risk, well, we're never going to be able to notice that we're going off the rail, right? So that's really important. Then the other thing is that be themselves or be ourselves, right? People are different. We already talked about this. Good teams draw on this difference. And this difference can only exist if people are not afraid of showing themselves to be different, right? If we're too afraid of being ourselves, then, well, we're just a bunch of automatons that all think and act like each other. Once again, there's no, no uh, innovation. There's no difference. There's no spark. And work is boring. And we don't want that. So think about this silly example that we can all relate to somehow, right? So if, think about a situation that's like this, right? If everybody else choose circle, do I feel safe to choose triangle? And what if triangle is the right answer? So if I don't feel, if I feel like I would be embarrassed to say triangle, even though I know triangle is the right answer, what's going to happen to this team? Well you're going to get the wrong answer, right? Think about that, how that impacts your grades. So psychological safety based on Google's data is by far the most important attribute, right? Psychological safety is the shared belief that it's safe to take risks and be oneself in front of each other. In other words, in a good team, you really should feel like you're not going to be embarrassed or punished for taking risks or being yourself. And if you don't feel psychologically safe, you don't want to take risks, you don't want to be yourself, and it typically just feels really bad to be on a part of this kind of team. Now, then we have dependability and structure and clarity, which are actually kind of related to psychological safety, but, um, but also different. Dependability is about teams getting things done on time and meet quality expectations, right? And the thing is, I would feel, well, I feel safe and comfortable and secure if I can trust my teammate to be dependable. And structure and clarity is about, we know what we are supposed to do, right? When we talk about roles, plans, goals, and all this, it's, it's really having clarity of um, what are we trying to do together and uh, what's our part, what's each other's part, right? And, uh, and if we know this, well, then we feel safe that I, I know what's expected of me and I can go ahead and do that. When this is confusing, when there's lack of structure and clarity, um, it stops people from being motivated and actually feels very uncomfortable. And, uh, and, and that's, that's why both dependability, these blue things here, are why dependability and structure and clarity are actually connected to psychological safety. These are not completely independent variables, right? Some things that don't matter, uh, is just as important to know, right? This is based on Google's huge data set. So actual version of the team members, this doesn't matter. This is a long time myth. People talk about, oh, you have to be able to really be extroverted and a social butterfly to, to make the team work. That's not the case, right? It's okay to be an introvert on the team. Typically we do, it's good to have a mix. We don't get to pick if there is a mix or not, right? Um, 
individual performance of team members, right? This doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have a superstar team member or you don't, right? Because it's not about the team. It's about the team, not the individual. Uh, seniority doesn't matter, so rank don't matter. Tenure, which is about how long someone worked there, doesn't matter as much because you can be just as useful in having fresh ideas as, uh, as having a lot of experience. So one note on this idea of individual performance, right? We're not saying it's okay for team members to slack off. That would be a low dependability team. That means I can't depend on this teammate. What this is really saying is busting the myth of the exceptional individual, that there is one person that's so smart and knows everything and can do everything on a team, and, and they're the reason the team succeed, and that is just not true, right? Okay, so the next part, we want to talk about teamwork in university settings because on that, well, that's where you are and uh, you're interested in this, right? And, I, I, and specifically, we'll talk a little bit about scenarios. Based on our experience, and, and I've, I've said, I, I think I've taught hundreds of teams by this point, most issues arise from the lack of psychological safety, which uh, actually often go unnoticed, uh, dependability, and, uh, and structure and clarity. These are really the most common issues. Meaning and impact are important. They are less important based on the data. They're less important, and but they're essential for motivation. So, so the one thing I would say about meaning and impact is really good for you if you can pick projects that are particularly meaningful to you, right? That that if you that if you can help it, right? Um, so, psychological safety being the first one, we want to be able to foster this. That means to nurture it, to create it, to develop it, right? And uh, Amy Edmondson, which is, she is the uh, uh, leading expert on this idea, has a great TED talk on on this. And if you're in, uh, if you've taken ENG 1101 from uh, us at Lausanne School of Engineering, you've seen this already. Either way, I highly recommend this video, but I'll summarize uh, what she suggests here, right? So in this talk, she shares three very simple things that individual can do to foster team psychological safety. Uh, acknowledging own fallibility, but it just means being humble. Right? Model curiosity and ask a lot of questions. Curiosity is really important um, to, to make teamwork work. Right? And, uh, and you want to frame work as a learning problem, not an execution problem. It's, it, you don't just go around and blame people for doing, making mistakes and doing bad things. Right? That, that, the teamwork fall apart very quick. What it is, is that you're learning to work with each other and you're learning to work on this problem together and you're learning to solve it better, right? You want to be humble, be curious and be kind. And, uh, and, and, and honestly, if, uh, actually, this, these are simple recommendations that's good for living your life uh, as a good person as well, but they work really well in teamwork, right? And, uh, and we added the fourth one is don't be mean to each other, be respectful. Right? And that, that's quite important. And we find that uh, these things are things that students can practice. And you see, uh, you see the, uh, if you have taken our first year ENG 1101 course, we, this is our class uh, agreement. Be humble, be curious, be kind, be respectful. Um, they're the key to creating psychological safety in your, in your team. Um, structure and clarity. We have some common issues here, right? Students often make this mistake. We've already talked about teamwork with group work, and that's what happens. They, they, and they divide the work into equal parts, and then without clearly assigning roles and device, like talk about what exactly are we trying to achieve here, right? And students often make the mistake of not clearly stating their expectations of each other, so there's no accountability, right? These are things that you need to talk through. Right? You need to have clearly, like when we say roles, it's really about what's our part? What are we trying to do? What, do I, what am I responsible for? Our goals, what, am I, what are we gonna achieve is 
very simply put, um, well, do we want an A in this or is a B okay? Right? How much effort are we expected to put into here uh, each week? When are we meeting? Right? Having a clear plan to meet and, and like we said earlier, if you just kind of divide up the work and come back the day before and expect that to work, it barely ever works. Right? That, that's not how you do teamwork. And uh, it's okay for all these things to evolve as the project moves forward. And if it does, you want to make sure everyone knows how it's evolved. And it could be the plan change. It could be that your goals change. It could be that uh, you get sick and or something happened to you, right? And uh, this is, again, how this relates to psychological safety. Um, you need to feel safe to be able to share this so everyone knows, right? Um, but we need to... Everyone needs to be informed as things change because you are interdependent. You're dependent on each other, right? And, and so the team can adjust accordingly. Then we get to a dependability, right? The thing is, in, nobody wants to work with slackers and freeloaders, and so obviously don't be one. In our experience, there's actually very few students that want to be slacker and freeloaders. However, students who are in low psychological safety teams will withdraw and engage, disengage from the team. And this may lead to other team may perceive them as slackers and freeloaders, right? So, so sometimes dependability actually hides the problem with psychological safety. Other times, there's a lack of clarity around goals and expectations. And then so, so students get very confused and, uh, and, and they are not, uh, they're not really doing the work because they don't know what they're supposed to do, right? Or even students don't even agree on what they're supposed to, what, how, what they expect on, of each other. And, uh, and then, then there is a perception of uh, students being slackers and freeloader. Now, they exist. That's, that's just the truth. Sometimes, uh, sometimes students don't do the work. And, uh, and we as uh, educators are here to support you. So you can always reach out to us for help. And uh, I just do want to say often that's not actually the case. There's something uh, more going on under the surface, right? Let's look at some scenarios because that's really the best way to understand what's going on. So I'm going to talk about two scenarios. They're based on real situations. Uh, let's say Hector, not real person's name, obviously, right? So Hector is an international student. Hector is a bit shy about their accent, and they worry about uh, fitting in with uh, Canadian students. Hector is, so doesn't like to talk in teams, in team meetings, right? The others assume that they were not engaged, and uh, but also didn't invite them to speak, right? So there's assumption going on here, and also they didn't invite them to make that space open for Hector to speak. And uh, as ta time passes on, Hector feels rather alone and unsafe with his teammates because he's, uh, he's afraid, he's afraid to speak. Right? His motivation for the project wanes and he started avoiding his teammates. And uh, a week before the project deadline, Hector gets sick. They didn't feel safe to, they didn't want to be embarrassed in front of their teammates, so they didn't tell them, right? So even though that they were sick and they obviously couldn't perform. And, uh, and the team handed in the project and blamed Hector for being a freeloader. So what happened here? What happened here is Hector experienced very low psychological safety. His teammates had no idea Hector felt this way and just assumed that, well, he's disengaged because he didn't care. There's a lack of communication, right? And uh, there's a lack of really curiosity and, uh, and, and humility and compassion here. And uh, Hector felt so unsafe that they couldn't even share that they were sick. And I want to say as an educator, I've seen this happen multiple times, where students actually felt ill and did not tell their, uh, their, their teammates because of low psychological safety, right? And their teammates could have been more curious about why Hector is disengaged and had conversations. So the key here is communication. I have this conversation and it, and it doesn't take much. It often takes very little. It's, it's how human beings are. We just want people to be a little curious about us. And then we talk. And then we all know what's going on. Right? Well, let's talk about situation number two. Again, based on very real situation. 
Amy is a very conscientious student who always does her work well ahead of deadline. So for you that don't know the word conscientious, it means that, right? It, it's a person who works very hard and who also does things very uh, organized and on time. And uh, Lin, another student, likes to do things very last minute and always finish, but always finish his work on time. Now, these students are very representative of our typical students. And I have some data to show this. There is, a, there is a significant percentage of students that does work just right before deadline, and a lot of students who well, plan their work very organized, right? Lynn and Amy were friends and decided to be partnered in a team project. They agreed to split the work 50-50 with the goal of finishing before the deadline. Amy would finish five days before deadline, and Lynn hasn't even started. So Amy started to get mad at Lynn for slacking and start to worry and stress. This is the thing. So if you're a very conscientious person, you might very well start to stress out when your teammates haven't started working yet, right? And then on the other hand, just felt attacked. And to Lin's perspective, he didn't need to start until much later because the deadlines, he has time, right? So he didn't start until two days before the deadline and did finish his part on time, right? Well, they're not friends after that. <laughs> That's, that's not nice. So in this example, there's a lack of understanding of each other's preferences, and more importantly, they don't have a clarity of when we say roles, goals, expectations, and plans, right? They had a single deadline. So Lynn and Amy had very different idea about when they were expected to complete their part of work, and they didn't com communicate with each other about how they do didn't work the same way. Right? If you think they, they what, what happens if they actually just had multiple deadlines, this wouldn't happen, right? And, and, uh, and if you were to, this, this is what that line says, right? If you break the project into phases with multiple deadlines, then, uh, then we would avoid the entire situation and they would most likely still be friends, right? So what do we do? So I wanna give some recommendations. Uh, like I said earlier, teamwork is about learning, thinking conceptually about doing, which is putting into practice and reflecting. So our team, or, uh, our recommendation is along this line. Now you have the basic learning, right? Starting out, this is all the recommendation for your doing and reflecting piece. So starting out before embarking on the project, we think you should meet either in person or in virtual and really get to know each other a little bit, right? Talk about things like where you're from, what food or music you like, what do you do for fun? It's basic, very human stuff. Be, just be together, right? Get to know each other. I think we think you should uh, watch the TEDx talk on psychological safety together and talk about why it's important, right? Talk about why it's important and talk about how do you want to work together as a team. Maybe create a team agreement of what's important to you, right? Um, you can start with the uh, be humble, be curious, uh, be kind, be respectful thing. That's a very good starting point for a team agreement. Uh, you wanna set up different roles. And, and when we say roles, this is really about, there's different ways of saying it. You wanna have clarity of what each of you are responsible for doing, right? Make sure you, you, what, you know what the plan is and what the goal is so, and uh, what each of you are expected to do. And, uh, and recognize that this is gonna evolve naturally over time, especially you keep in communication with each other and, uh, uh, and, and be okay with that and the teamwork would be much more smooth this way, right? And you wanna make sure everyone understand how when things does evolve, right? So for example, you get sick and can't complete one part. Or for example, you run into a project, uh, uh, maybe some part of the project that you're assigned to, you write in, write in a, dead end, a dead end, right? And you have to switch your solution directions. And you gotta have your other teammates know when that happens. <coughs> and Third, we recommend really practice fostering psychological safety throughout the project. So as individual students, you can do these things, acknowledge your infallibility, be humble, model curiosity and ask lots of questions, be curious, 
uh, really think about how to frame the work as learning problem, not execution problem, right? Let's be curious, let's be kind, and don't be mean. Be respectful to each other, right? That's the starting point. And uh, periodically, we recommend you do some assessment of your team's psychological safety as well as dependability and, and structure and clarity to make sure you are on track. And this is more of a novice thing uh, that we're using to help you understand these concepts, but they're also, uh, well, they, they, you, you, it is a novice thing, but it's also very helpful when you're actually getting into a professional environment to keep assessing this, right? So some tools are uh, Amy Edmondson actually have seven, a seven question questionnaire and ITP Bentrick, which is a company that has a, has a suite of software tool for assessing uh, dependability and structure and clarity. So for students who's in my class uh, this term, this is 2023, uh, in the winter, we are going to be using both of these tools to, uh, to well, help you assess your team's performance. Okay. Uh, this is our recommendation and this is our introduction to the uh, to the concept of teamwork we hope that uh, it's going to be helpful for you as uh, well it's, this is a learning journey right so I just want at the end I want to go to uh, we have where is that slide I just want to make sure that this is clear, that teamwork can be learned, right? Everyone can learn to be better at teamwork, and uh, this is through learning, thinking and learning, doing and reflecting. Thank you very much.